I'm on a mission to find out if the bloodthirsty reputation of the piranha is justified. But if I'm going to truly test how aggressive it is, then I'm going to have to be a human guinea pig. This water may be full of piranhas, but they're not attacking me. If I can swim here, and it's true that the old man from the fish market story and the victims of the bus crash were eaten alive, then something is missing that is needed to trigger a feeding frenzy. Still alive. There's plenty of water here. I'm guessing there's enough food for them down there without them wanting to attack me. So what about if I set something up where I know there are plenty of piranhas and I know they're hungry? Welcome to my piranha pool. Here at a local hotel, just like my favourite Bond villain, I've filled a small swimming pool with over a hundred red-bellied piranhas, and they haven't eaten for days. It's the perfect opportunity to test just how voracious these creatures are. Everybody knows about sharks being bloodthirsty killers. Just wondering if piranhas have the same kind of, of, of sensitivity to blood. Piranhas have evolved to live in the murky, sediment-filled waters of the Amazon, where visibility is often less than a foot, so a good sense of smell to locate their next meal is surely essential. That's definitely getting a reaction. There's a number of fish have come into that cloud of blood and, and they're looking around. They want something to chew into, but there's nothing there at the moment. I think time to put a bit of uh, flesh in there for them. So blood is definitely wetting their appetite. And there would have been blood in the water from those injured by the impact of the bus crash. Now, I wonder how these piranhas will react to a bloody piece of prime steak. There we go, it's the first nibble, the first nibble, the first nibble. And there they are, they're all piling in. Once the first one started, there we go, they're all over it now. Piranhas react to the sound and movement of another piranha feeding, attracting them to the scene and inciting a feeding frenzy. As soon as one piranha takes a bite, it moves away, allowing a fast turnover of feeders and a rapid succession of bites. It's no wonder they are known for stripping their food to the bone in just minutes. There we go, meat definitely works. I just wonder now how they might react to something that's alive. These piranhas were tearing into a piece of dead meat just a couple of minutes ago, but they're just not interested in me. So what is it that turns piranhas into vicious, murderous killers? That is what I want to try and find out. If the story of the bus crash is true, then presumably, just like my piranha pool, there was human flesh, blood, and a mass of hungry piranhas. Yet I am unharmed. The people on the bus weren't so lucky. As I continue my investigation, I discover the evidence to prove that the bus crash definitely happened. But more significantly, I track down a survivor who had an unbelievable escape on that day. Maybe he can give me the details of exactly what happened, so I can work out what triggers a piranha attack. How did US President Teddy Roosevelt describe piranhas? Was it the most ferocious fish in the world, an interesting creature worthy of study, or a harmless, misunderstood fish?